This is part two of our overview of the new features and enhancements to Mudbox 2009. I'm just going to go ahead and swing around to the top here on our uh, character and I'm going to grab one of our new brushes, the repeat brush here. So we'll just take a look at that and I just want to grab a custom stencil that I've created, or a custom stamp, I'm sorry, actually that I've created on there and let's just de decrease the size of our brush and actually just to illustrate what this tool does it works really well for actually repeating some uh, stamps, whether custom or default stamps. So you can see I get that nice result. Now if I turn on orient to stroke you'll see I get this nice kind of zippery effect. So this would be great for creating something like a zipper or repeating rivets on a piece of machinery. So what I want to do is just take this kind of scale little image that I've made here and just turn on some randomize here so I can get some random scale in here and I just want to put it along the flat parts that we built previously on the top of the head here. So just quickly bring that in. We just start roughing in some scales and shapes like that. And what I'm going to do actually, let's just turn off this layer here and turn on a more completed uh, layer. And we'll just go into our object list. I'm going to turn my light on. So if we jump into our light here, let's just go into our default material, make sure our shadows are on. We'll turn on the shadows on our light. And you can see that I'm casting real-time shadowing here on my character that I can quickly, of course, adjust as we go. It's important to keep moving your light around as you work, um, just to check your forms. You know, you want to take a look at the overall detailing and see the actual structure of your forms as you work. So uh, let's just jump back, just turn that guy off here for now. I'm just going to jump back into our sculpting here and I'm just going to step up a le uh, another level of subdivision. And we've worked on some primary forms and secondary forms, so now we want to get into some kind of tertiary detailing. And we're doing that at about 4.4 million here. So let's just create a new layer and in here we can do a couple of different things here so I want to actually use another one of our new tools this is the spray brush and this tool works um, again it's stamp specific so we're gonna use I've got some scales in there so let's just actually go ahead and start kinda of blasting the surface here with some detail on there so we'll just kinda of spray in some overall detail along the mouth in there and just to illustrate what that does there this tool works excellent for just kinda of bombing the surface with some details on there so we can just keep adjusting our overall scaling of our brush to give us that overall effect if we want it on there. Now of course back into here if I wanted to do something a little different along the lips I'm just going to decrease the radius of my brush here and I might want to kind of preserve the no detail along these lips for now just to do something very different. Maybe I don't want the scales to overlap on the lips of this guy here so we'll just kind of erase out what I've sprayed onto there and let's just go ahead and create a whole new layer I'm just going to call this one, we'll just call it nose detailing, or nose details will do. And we'll take a look at another one of our new brushes here. So we'll use our imprint brush. And then what the imprint tool will do is, it's again stamp specific, and I've got uh, kind of these finite little um, uh, scales or dots going in here. And I can just start to go in and quickly kind of pull that out to get some detailing in and around these nostrils here. So if I wanted to work in some detail here, this will allow me to rapidly scale and kind of customize the overall detailing of that there. So let's just go ahead and lay some imprint stamps down on that area. And that's fine. And we can take a look at this actual layer on here. You'll see that, of course, we have in Mudbox the opacity on here. What this will let me do, we actually have a slider built into there now as well, so we can adjust the opacity down by a slider as we work. So we'll just take a look at this. Our opacity doesn't just work from uh, 0 to 100. We can use it, of course, as a reducer to do that, so we can reduce the overall effects of our detailing for that specific layer. But we can also do a couple of other things here. So I can go ahead and amplify the detail. So let me just actually go above 100 to about 175. And it's working as an amplifier. It's actually multiplying the overall effect of that there as well. So another couple of things that we can do on here is that we could actually go and do the uh, opposite result here. Now let's just take this one here and, and grab a negative value on that. So you can see that I'm actually going um, in the reverse direction on this now. So just to illustrate that a little more, let's just jump down to something maybe like, um, oops, let's just jump down to maybe something like uh, um, minus 50 on that. And you can see that we're actually getting the results there. So there's three basic functions of that to um, reduce, amplify, and invert your sculpting details on there. So we'll just go ahead and reset this guy back up here to uh, 
100 and look at other, a couple other ways that we can go in and change the overall effect of that. So we have another brush here that we can take a look at and this is our contrast brush. I'm just going to kind of decrease the strength on that, maybe bring the radius down a bit. And instead of working across the complete layer like I was doing there while we were adjusting our opacity, I can now go ahead and paint the resulting effect. So I'm actually just sp specifically painting areas here. I'm amplifying the detail that I've already done uh, based off of specific details that I've done previously here. So I can just go ahead and start to paint that in rather than working right across a complete layer on there. Another couple things that we can do there of course is I could go ahead and paint freeze the area. So if I didn't want to work or I didn't want this to be affected I can go ahead and paint that and you'll see that we get this nice kind of blue result on there. And I'll just grab something like our sculpt brush just to illustrate this. If I just go ahead and sculpt through there you can see that it's locked those vertices out. Of course we could do the same thing with a mask. We have a little mask icon up here now as well. And if I turn my mask brush on you'll see that we get kind of a red paint going on here and I can do the same type of effect on there. I've masked out that area there now that's not going to be affected by sculpting and uh, we can use that as a really valuable tool for masking out areas that we don't want any sculpting detail on there. So I'm actually just going to, let's just delete uh, this area here and let's actually just, um, we can actually unfreeze that area just by hitting the control that's going to give me the inverse effect on there. So actually let's just turn this off and turn on some more completed details. I'm actually just going to, we're up at uh, active level 6 on here so I'm just going to turn on some of my uh, finished detailing on this character here so we can see all the details going on, on on him there and I think what we'll actually do is just go ahead and step up a whole layer of subdivision on here so what we can do with this is go ahead and create more layers on this you'll see that when we're working with layers that they're not just something that you stack upon each other you can go ahead and reorder them you can use them for different detail passes different directions of design as I mentioned in the first part you could build an entire library of morph targets out of this as well you can mirror and flip layers um, while you work you can edit non-destructively you can paint masks as we've seen on there and of course you can do all of these different uh, blending and merging um, using sliders as well so here we're working at about 17 and a half million polygons I'm just going to create a new layer there and let's continue to detail this surface a little bit further here. Maybe we'll just continue with our spray brush with some of these scales. So let's maybe work a little bit smaller here. And I want to just start to paint in some more scales around the eye here. So you can see the performance feedback I'm getting on. I'm getting here as I work. Let's just change that to another one here. Maybe go a little bit smaller if we wanted to work some more details in between some of these existing folds on here. And you can see the overall performance I'm getting here and this is at 17 and a half million poly so if we just grab that spray brush and let's maybe just grab uh, let's just grab those big scales there again and we can go ahead and start to detail in uh, along the back let's just go a little bit smaller on that and you can see the performance I'm getting here that's at 17 and a half million polys and I can just keep working along here and just keep detailing in as as I go maybe around around the spine here So you can see the power here that we have in Mudbox 2009. The performance is incredible. Um, the tool set that we have um, and the increased um, default libraries of stamps and stencils that are available. So that's an overview of Mudbox 2009 um, for the enhancements and new features in sculpting.